Hello everyone, this is Dimitri from Not Just Games, and welcome back to part 3 of our ongoing devlog series where we're going to be porting our game Hate Me Not from Unity to Godot. And because we are complete beginners, we are gonna have to teach ourselves a little bit more about the engine. And we decided that it would be a great idea to just uh, make a Flappy Bird clone and uh, just slap on our Hate Me Not assets and see if it's gonna look nice and just um yeah a lot of the small details that gonna be like for example how to do scripting with both uh, gd scripts and g sharp stuff so a lot of interesting things that are gonna be hopefully saving us time when we're gonna do the bigger project and the general timeline is like we want to finish in four days the flappy bird clone publish it on itch.io so that we can have maybe even some automated uh, deployment going on. Let's see that. I, I haven't tried that out yet, but um, I hope it's going to be possible to just push stuff on Git, uh, have some kind of YAML file, and it should automatically deploy to, um, yeah, to itch.io. And if that doesn't work, then we'll have to do it manually like some cavemen, but... I wonder how cavemen would have some kind of automatic deployment. What what would be the analogy? It's like, yeah, I don't know. And yeah, four days for that. Then the flabby thing is going to be finished and we will start a brand new project and port our Unity assets, scripts and stuff like that from that engine to Godot. And in the grander schemes, hopefully it's only going to take four weeks. Let me just show you what we have done up until now and maybe give you some of the insights we had while doing this kind of mini project. Let's go. So, um, as you can see, we have the... Let me zoom in. This is the player still. And you don't see anything else because we don't have anything else visible right now. We have created this kind of spawner thing uh, with a timer node. And this spawns from time to time these pillows that we need to dodge. So space is also working to jump. And it's like... In the beginning it was much more... F um. Yes, now I remember why Flappy Bird was so frustrating. Okay, let me restart. We don't have a restart kind of automated button thing. But we're gonna also do that. And for now you can just jump along these things. There is no scoring right now. Um, so you can, you are kind of trapped in this eternal trying to not get caught somewhere in this pillars thing, like that. And um, yeah, when once you hit them, you just uh, disappear into the void. So right now that is the case. And um, the interesting parts of this thing were for once that you have this kind of convenient timer nodes. In um, in Unity, you, I would probably do some kind of coroutine and yield for the number of seconds or I would do some kind of update and have some kind of float variable that's gonna be counting down as the update ticks. Um, this way I think it's gonna be a little bit more clearer what the timer is. Now I haven't called it anything useful but um, I can show you maybe in the script how it looks like. So this one I wrote in C-sharp and I really like the Rider ID too. Like it's just nice to, to develop in Rider, yeah. Just wanted to mention that. Some kind of plugin doesn't work, but I don't care. Yeah, so you basically have to, like in the awake uh, function in, in Unity, you would uh, have some kind of variable, you would get the node, this is something like get component, but it gets the the node that's below that thing that has the script. So this would be kind of like a component in that sense. And you have to, at least I found it to work this way, this uh, dot notation like a kind of path. You write then the name of the... Um, of the node and one thing that i already i'm gonna not like is that if i rename this thing timer something here it's not gonna be renamed that means if i press play now it shouldn't work and it should yeah it just crashes. 
So I don't like that this kind of renaming does not update the reference, but of course this is a string, how would it update it? I don't know, but I still don't like it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will find a way to generate C sharp source code automatically. I don't know how that would be possible, but I'm, I'm a dreamer and I don't like this kind of strings with renaming and stuff. So maybe I will have some time extra and find a way to solve this little stupid problem that I have. But even if not, it's still fine. Um, or maybe you know a way to do that because that would be great. Uh, then you can just write it in the comments and it would save me some time for of creating the custom plugin or whatever I would sink my time into. But yeah, so basically you create this, uh, you get this node. Uh, I'm setting it here to the variable in case I would use it some other time. Then you can connect to it and this is like subscribing to an event in Unity you say which event you want to subscribe to. So to find what the name is, I'm just going into the node that I want to check. And uh, you have this node next to the inspector here. You can see that it has a timeout signal and you can also have the other signals. So basically the timer has only this one signal so we are subscribing to it in the C-sharp script. So let me bring that over. And this is a timeout thing. Then you have to say which target it's going to be connecting to. So you want to say that this object, in this case, oh my God, this. <laughs> so this object has a method on spawn timeout, which is this one. And it should be called whenever this signal is triggered or emit it to use Godot's terminology. And because initially it's not triggered at this point, I trigger it manually one time here and I can remove this comment here because I don't need it anymore. But yeah, um, basically with this very simple piece of coding, uh, I can subscribe to a timer that happens every, let's see how many seconds, every three seconds. And now I'm, yeah, I'm just randomizing the randomizer from Godot script. Um, and I'm creating two blocks. The upper block is going to have a random Y and the below one will have a dot upper block Y plus 500 because one difference is also that in Unity, up is plus and down is minus. And in Godot, down is plus and up is minus. So it's it's reversed. So yeah, that's not confusing at all. And probably it's not going to hurt my other scripts that I've been developing from the other game. But yeah, any case, this is the, the way it is. And it's just something to get used to. So going back to the thing here, to the Godot engine, we, we have the spawn already. And we have also a script in the player. So let me switch over to that. And for that, I am exporting two variables. And exporting in Godot is something like using the serialized field thing in Unity. So this allows you to, to expose some of the parameters in the inspector. So if I go here to player, I can see gravity and jump power is here. So there are some cool things that are like using Odin Inspector in, in Unity that are already existing in Godot. So I think it's called uh, Property Hints and you can use them to just define some kind of stuff. Like for example, I think there must be a range and I, am, I hope this is gonna be working like that. Can I use, can I do this? No, uh, it needs to be a string anyway. So let's see if this is going to work. Actually, I've never used them yet because, um, yeah, I don't know that, but yeah. Okay. That works as expected. Crazy. Um, cool. What was I having it before is the question now. Okay. Four. 
Perfect. But uh, yeah, it's a cool thing that you have this Odin Inspector-like things without actually needing to buy the this kind of plugin. So I really like that. And I'm not sure yet how or if it's going to be possible to export other classes so that you don't ha have to always reinstate your parameters here and do some crazy mappings. But we'll see that in the future. For now, we are just sticking to the plan of having the things in the, in the attachable script. And yeah, so I have made just a very simple, very simple script that's gonna have some gravity applying to the player. And then one thing that I used, which is very, very cool, is this visibility node. I can jump into the player scene to show you that. So the player has this visibility notifier 2D and you can define which the bounds are and when the player or when these bounds are out of the viewport then a node signal is emitted and this screen exited thing I have registered to it inside of my player script and when on exited scene happens, then I say gone you are and I Q3. And this is funny. So in order to destroy an instance of an object, you can do free or you can do Q3. And free would do that immediately. And I think it's not the cleanest thing to do. Um, from what I've seen, Q3 here is the standard. It's like uh, using destroy versus destroy immediately. Um, or destroy immediate. I don't remember. Anyways, I don't need Unity stuff anymore. I have Godot. Uh, <laughs> I really hope that uh, in the end this uh, switch to Godot is gonna be not a mistake. But of course we always have the flexibility to just go back to Unity if something changes there. Yeah. So back to the project. So we are going to the world scene. And did I mention again how I like being able to switch with these tabs? Imagine in Unity to have your scenes like tabs here and to be able to switch like instantly. How cool would that be? But I guess I'm wishing too much right now. So yeah, going back to, um, to our world. We have the player node, we, we saw this already, that you can, uh, if you exit the thing, and you, gone you are. And let me also show you how collisions are handled with these pillars. So, the player itself has an area 2D, which is a 2D area. Wow. I know, right? This is the, this is the pro tutorial here. Uh, but. Yeah, bear, bear with me. So you have this area, which is in 2D space. And then you have this collision shape, which is also in 2D space. And you can define here the rectangle for the collision. And then if you get this area as a node and have a reference to it in your script, you can subscribe or you can connect to the area entered signal thing here and then you could in theory also destroy or queue free yourself when when you just enter another area in general and i think one thing that i haven't done yet is uh, counting the score right so i think what i'm gonna do is let me just play here i'm gonna pause and can i Yes, I can. So I think here I'm going to add another area to D and I'm going to call it, I don't know, goal or whatever, or score pointer or whatever. And whenever the player is going to leave that area, they're going to get points or scores or whatever. And then I would check the area name, probably something like score or something. And if that's the case, then I would add to the score. If not, it would destroy itself. It would queue itself. It would queue free itself. Yeah, 
So that's um, the state up until now. Maybe one more thing about the sprites. So last uh, in the last video, I just showed you that uh, the image was not so clear. So, so if you go to sprites, we have this sprite protagonist PNG, which we generated using the A sprite file. And if uh, I open the import tab, you can see that there is a filter here. And if I enable it and re-import, you can see that it has the same effect as this uh, bilinear filter mode, whatever it's called in Unity. And if I turn it off and re-import, then we have this pixel, this nice pixel graphics that we are used to and we want. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the level we're at right now after two days of developing, two or three days of developing, plus doing the tutorial devlog series, which is also my first time doing and i hope you are enjoying it a little bit so yeah by the way if you do enjoy it then please leave a like that would be very nice because uh then i would know that i'm not talking to a wall you know okay so yes this is uh day three we are gonna be doing next uh, scoring system and a main menu kind of thing or more like probably press any key to enter the game something like that simple we should add a background that's gonna look nice. Maybe we will already do this masking thing here because um, let, let me show you what I mean with masking thing from our other game, Hate Me Not. So with masking thing, I mean that uh, you have this black space and in the black space, you are also black. And in the white space, you're also white. So. And the outline is inverting itself as well. So the, these are technically here two sprites which are inverting themselves when you are crossing this border. This is a mask, this side is a mask. And it's, there is a way to do the same effect in uh, Godot as well. And that's gonna be very cool to implement. Maybe we'll do this in Flappy Bird or maybe we're gonna do this in Ghost Bird. Maybe we're gonna do this in Flappy Ghost, uh, maybe not. We're just gonna see how much time we'll have because I really want to do the same kind of pipeline that I have for the Unity project to automate this, the to automate the deployment. Yeah, so that's it basically for now. We have a very basic Flappy Bird construction, or should I say Flappy Ghost. And for the meantime, we're gonna still be developing a and make polishing it a little bit, maybe do some tweening. I don't know. We'll just see how much we can do within the next four days. Hopefully we will manage to do this automated pipeline because it's just so convenient to be able to push just one button and it automatically deploys to the target platform you have. That would be great. But yeah, if you enjoy this kind of videos, this dev docs, it I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and um, follow us in the future in our endeavors in porting stuff from Unity to Godot, just generally game dev stuff. Yeah, I really enjoy doing this kind of devlog, so I will keep doing them and see you in the next one, I guess. Bye.